Peace, 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 family. My name is Michael Jordan, AKA the Serious Alchemist, back with another Saturday book review. Got a good one for y'all today. Um, we're going to go in with this pan energy today. The book we are uh, reviewing today is uh, The Rebirth of Pan. Um, Hidden Faces of the American Earth Spirit by Jim Brandon. Now, this book is going to be very hard to find, so you're going to have to be really in, uh, interested in this information, you know, to get, get this book, because I think I paid, like, mm, almost $200 for this book. I, I don't know if it's still out of print. You may be able to find it, you may not, but I tell you, family, it's worth having in your library. This one is a gem. Okay, I'm gonna read the back of it. You know what I'm saying? Like I always do to start the video. And it says, is there a third force? What are UFOs really? Wisdom laden, extra, extraterrestrials here to solve our problems as simplistic books and Hollywood movies would have it. Are they mere fragments of underdone potato triggering hallucinations among unstable personalities? How about Bigfoot, Big Bird? The Loch Ness Monster and other zany zoology periodically reported. Are they uncatalogued critters that haven't yet been ear tagged with Latin names or merely more lunatic fringe nincompoopery? One thing is clear. The interpretive field is split down the middle. On the one hand are cranky cultists and trusting true believers eager for marvels. On the other is a smaller but rigidly dogmatic circle of naysayers wrapped in the proud flag of science and reason. But could it be that both extremes in their own way have a part of the true answer? That there is an elusive third force which can conjure up terrifying apparitions, but which is not real in the strict scientific sense of being measurable and replicable. replicable excuse me. Anomalous Jim Brandon, known to many for his pioneering study, Weird America, looks at this possibility. Along the way, he factors in such related riddles as un incomprehensible inscriptions on remote American rocks, antique earthen structures that show intricate mathematical aspects, and even the role of certain numbers and names in unusual phenomena. His conclusion, there is indeed such an energy, such an energy, excuse me. La, 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 la. Sometimes I get, I start talking too fast. I get ahead of myself sometimes, excuse me. His conclusion, there is indeed such an energy unknown until this time, but closely tied to such earth-related phenomena as fault lines, caves, springs, and groundwater channels. The name Brandon has given this earth spirit Pan is, of course, that of the ancient Greek god of all nature. Pan was pronounced dead at the ambit of the city-centered anti-pagan Christian era, but there is abundant evidence that even if his demise did occur, some such forces again very much at work in the world today with possibly monumentous consequences for the present era of rootless rationalism and unbridled techno-industrialism. Yo, family, this book is worth having. This, this book is a gem. It's got some images in here I'm going to show y'all um, that are some really, really good images and explains a lot of mysteries for me. And I'm sure it will for a lot of y'all out there in TV land. But yeah, um, this is a very, very interesting book. And you must have it in your library if you're interested in Pan, the Greek god Pan, and, and what it represents. Um, it has ancient maps in here of America. Um, where is that? I just seen. Prehistoric earth structures of the eastern states as they existed in the 19th century. Dots indicate relative numbers and individual constructions. That's the U.S. right there, family. That's the ancient map of the U.S. Parts of the U.S. when uh, heavy melanated folks ruled the lands. You feel me? So, yeah. Um, that's one thing that's in here. And there's some pictures of here. There's one picture in here of this so-called creature that uh, somebody saw one afternoon standing by a tree. You know what I'm saying? Just to show y'all that we ain't the only thing on this earth. There's other um, conscious or creatures or whatever you want to call it. And here it is right here. And it's called, it says, since ancient times in Europe, mystery entities ranging from Scandinavian trolls to hostile monsters of Greek legend have been identified with stone. 
and not infrequently with trees. Even a number of contemporary Bigfoot report, reports describe boulder hurling and rock caning. This apparition called the Dover Demon was seen on rock piles and walls around Needham, Massachusetts in April of 1977. At about the same time, an entity described as a man, main lion reportedly attacked two dogs in Dover, Arkansas. That's the that's the uh, picture, fam. I want to get that on camera so they can see that. So if anybody's ever seen something like that, y'all know that those these things do exist. It wasn't just a figment of your imagination. Moving on. Um, yeah, that's just one thing in this book. That's why this book is so hard to find, family, because this book is 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 giving you receipts on shit that happened right here on this on this ground in the U.S. You feel me? So this stuff is good to know. And um, what else was I talking about? Um, um, what else is in this book that's good to know about? Um, you got a few ancient um, oriental statues right here in America. What would they be doing here? Uh, even objects of apparent oriental origin have turned up from time to time. An ancient statuette carved of wood from an extinct tree was found 15 feet under the ground near spring by the North Canadian River a few miles north of Luther, Oklahoma in 1940. Orientalist Cyclone Covey calls the style Ming and says the figure could be that of Shu Xing Lao, a Chinese god popular until the fifth century AD. And then right of that, right of the, that picture is a Mandarin uh, like figure it was uncovered five feet of verb in the 1920s called the Devil's Kitchen. You know what I'm saying? See, we don't, they don't show you this type of stuff on the news. That's why you got to get books and read. You know what I'm saying? Because you know what they, you know what the saying, how the saying go, if you want to hide something from a black man, put it in a book because he don't read. You know what I'm saying? So we already shutting that shit down because a lot of us is buying books and like crazy, putting libraries in our house. A lot of us got libraries in our home today. But uh, yeah, this is why we got to read, family. That's why we got to read so we can get these images, show them to our children, show them the truth. You know what I'm saying? We can't let this beast, beast teach our children these lies. You know what I'm saying? Um, there's another image in here I wanted to share with y'all. Um, where is it? And it's something I want to read in here, too. There's a little part I want to read in here. Um, I want to find this one more picture, though, for y'all real quick. So it gets documented on camera. Um, plus, there was lots of mounds here, too, in Americas, y'all, that our ancestors put here and used to go and worship and uh, call on certain nature spirits. You know what I'm saying? And call on rain when they needed rain and for the crops and things of that nature. You feel me? So, um, yeah, this is some really um, powerful stuff in this book. And um, let's see. And here, yeah, right here. I want to read this to y'all real quick, family. <clears throat> it says, Masons find esoteric aspects in antiquities. So it says, so with these caveats in mind, let's see if there is any gold where we can find it here. We illustrate Pigeon's Root River, Minnesota assemblage. He had described the central mound as 36 feet in diameter and 12 feet high. The three embankments were each 144 feet long, 12 feet across, and three, four, and five feet high. He noted that the sum of the heights of the embankments equal the vertical height of the central mound. Also, these two 12s, when multiplied together, yield the length of the embankments. The Pythagorean implications of all this apparently were too much to resist. So they find in so-called Pythagorean mathematics in American mounds. So I let you know, this was also a part of the ancient Camite Empire, America. They hid a lot of shit from you, family. So with this book, you can piece it back together. When you start reading this book, you can start putting little pieces back together and see that this was ancient Egypt. You know what I'm saying? Grand Canyon, they found all kind of artifacts in the Grand Canyon of one of the ancient pharaohs. I think it was Tut, Tut Ankh Amen. They found a lot of his stuff in the Grand Canyon, but they did the, the, the switch and took it over there to Egypt and told us they found it in Egypt because we ain't there, family. They could tell us anything. You know we're dealing with um, professional uh, world-class liars. 
You feel me? So yeah, that's why we got to get these books. You know what I'm saying? So we can read, you know, teach the truth to our children. But yeah, family, like I said, the Pythagorean, the Pythagorean implications of all this apparently were too much to resist. For 1922, the official Masonic, Masonic magazine, New Age, carried an article by an Ohio Masonic scholar named John G. Keplinger, in which he combined an appreciation of Stoddard's arithmetical exercises with an interpretation of pigeons' more esoteric-looking earth forms. Kepler dubbed the Root River Array pure Egyptian sacred geometry. This is on page 163, family. This ain't coming from me. This is coming from the book. That's why I'm telling y'all we got to get these books because it's telling I'm going to say I'm going to read it one more time. And it's on page 163 in The Rebirth of Pan, The Hidden Races of the American Earth Spirit. Now, I'm going to read this one more time. It says the Pythagorean implications of all this apparently were too much to resist for in 1922, the official Masonic magazine, New Age, carried an article by an Ohio Masonic scholar named John G. Keplinger, in which he combined an appreciation of Stoddard's arithmet arithmetical exercises with an interpretation of pigeons' more esoteric-looking earth forms. And it goes on to say, Kepl Keplinger dubbed the Root River Array pure Egyptian sacred geometry and suggested that it symbolized a 120-year conjunction of Saturn, Jupiter, and Mars. He seduced this from the fact that an equilateral triangle divides the circle into three 120-degree sections, 320-degree sections, while the symbol of one of the three planets is in, the, is in each angle of the figure, and the 36-foot symbol of the sun reposes in the center mound. According to the Pythagorean numerology, Keplinger tells us the number 36 symbolizes the sun. So it's all right there, family. This is ancient Egypt. This was part of the ancient Egyptian empire, America. And as uh, the great Phil Valentine said, they used to come here and get their stuff. You know what I'm saying? This was a part of their empire. They used to come here and get their cocaine. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Thank, you know, I got to thank Phil for that information because, you know, but yeah, family. And uh, let me go into um, another little small piece in this book of why you need to get this, this work, family. That's why I do what I do. Because I don't want to be your leader. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to be your master. I want you to be your own master. The master of your own house, your own family. I don't want to lead nobody nowhere. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to follow me nowhere. You don't want to follow me around the block. You feel me? So... I just want us to put that out there. I want to be nobody's leader. I want you to be your own leader. That's why I come with this. I come with the books. So you ain't got to wait on me. You can dive your face instead of getting on Facebook. You can put your face in a book. <clears throat> you get what I'm saying? And get the information for yourself. You know what I'm saying? Because it's time out for so-called leaders and looking up. Be your own leader. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You are your own universe. Be your own leader. That's why I come with this stuff. So people can you know, run their own lives because I don't I don't want nobody following me. Don't follow me nowhere. You know what I'm saying? Follow yourself. Follow you, you know what I'm saying? Follow these books. That's what it's all about. But anyway, back to the content. And I'm gonna read something else in here too about the author, Jim Brandon. Because the, the dude was the dude was uh, uh cool, he's a cool dude. And I'm gonna let y'all know, um I it don't matter where the truth comes from with me. I say this a lot. Because a lot of people get caught up, oh man, you reading all them white boy books and the white, I don't give a shit what color they are if, if the truth come from. If, if, if they kicking the truth, they kicking the truth. I don't give a shit if they orange and pink. You know what I'm saying? And y'all got to remember a lot of these Europeans were custodians of our knowledge while we were sleeping. They they studied it and held on to it and put it in a lot of book form for us to get it on the other side when we woke up. So remember that. So don't get caught up in colors. You know what I'm saying? Because white supremacy and black supremacy ain't none of that shit real. Only thing real is the truth. You know what I'm saying? So y'all got to feel me on that one. That's the only thing I'm concerned with is truth. So get the book, family. The Rebirth of Pan, Hidden Faces of the American Earth and Spirit by Jim Brandon. Excellent book. And like I said, I was going to read this about the author real quick. Jim Brandon began, began his writing career as reporter and news editor for major American newspapers. Although he had first encountered the writings of anomalist Charles Fort as a youth, his skepticism toward the way 
society gathers and interprets knowledge was augmented by what he calls the dark axiom of journalism. A newsman is as much or more concerned with what not to report. While screening the daily flow of telegraph news from around the world, Brandon soon saw that the dead spike ended the day with the far greater bulk of filtered out reports and the material neatly tailored into the printed pages. It was with these accounts of odd things falling from clear skies, of implausible animal sightings, of places where improbable things seem to keep happening, that Brandon began his unique speculations. His first book, Scale Study, was Weird America, published in 1978. In the present volume, he moves in for a closer examination of several major themes and problems of anomalism. The Rebirth of Pan, Jim Brandon. Y'all, this is an excellent book. I ain't even really got into this book. I might not have, should have uh, did a review on it yet, but Spear told me to bring this today, so I did. But yeah, this is an excellent book, man. This this book is excellent. And good luck finding it. You know, I'm telling y'all, good luck finding it. And I'm still going through this because there's one little piece I intentionally wanted to read on here. And it's very, very profound. And I, I hope I could find it. You know what I'm saying? And I didn't uh, mark it which was my bad. Um, right, so um, I don't know. Let me see if I can find it real quick, family. Just bear with me for a little quick minute, for a quick minute here, because it's uh, really profound information. Um. I think is this it? Uh no, no. Let's let's see. Yeah, here we go. Forces from within. It's on page 106. And it says, Rock scraped and hammered against the bottom of the car as the blacktop ended alongside UB Hebe Crater, and the wheels dropped into two seemingly bottomless ruts winding off to the southwest around 10 Mountain. Raindrops already had begun streaking across the windshield, doing little to reassure, doing little to reassure me that I was not embarked on a great fuel, fool's errand. Skies have been lowering since I folded my tent and stole my gear at Stovepipe Wells that morning, and now, 40 miles to the northwest, half mile above the Death Valley floor, I was driving right up to meet January storm. Swamp. I was driving to meet the January storm sweeping across Northern California. But I reasoned it was a now or never thing. Excuse me, let me say that again. But I reasoned it was a now or never thing. I did not have the time to wait here for better weather. And besides, this bit of wintry squall was preferable to the paralyzing heat of summer season. Most important, however, was the widespread story that just down this uninviting trail was a place where wind sweeping across a thin film of winter ice could actually blow heavy rocks around like skaters on a rink. So with that much of self-assurance, I allowed my battered T-bird to surge ahead slowing down the slopes to get a run for the next climb, crashing across Wash House where to stop would be to stay and gradually chewing away 25 rasking miles toward the racetrack and its famous rambling rocks. Finally, the mountain range playa came into view, looking like a small cafe a la colored lake. But when I stood on the surface, I saw only a flat expanse of buffy clay that had baked and cracked in the sun. Toward the north edge lay a heap of reddish granite and it seemed that the rocks lying here and there over a wide area were of the same type. <clears throat> These varied from mere fragments to sizable chunks weighing upwards of 600 pounds and most had left behind them the furrow-like trails that had given rise to all speculation. Scattered among them were a sprinkling of metal muffins left by wild burrows. By now the wind was gusting sharply as the heavily weathered system whirled by overhead, brushing the tips of the chocolate brown panamints. I was able by crouching very low near the bigger rocks to get a fair idea of the amount of wind force bearing against them. It cannot be described in one word. Huh. I don't think that was what I was looking for because it didn't. I thought I was that was the page I was looking for. Family, you have to forgive me for that. It wasn't. So if there was something in there for somebody, hopefully it was. You know what I'm saying? But that wasn't what I was looking for. But let me see here. Um, um, well, I may not be able to find it in this one. Maybe I'll do a part two, family. Uh, this... Um, the Rebirth of Pan, The Hidden Faces of the American Earth Spirit by Jim Brandon. Family, get the book if you can find it. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be tough to find. Like I said, I paid almost like $200 for the book. 
and it took me a minute to find it, but it's a lot of good information in here. Um, I've been through this book a little bit, not as much as I should have. So I don't really think I was really prepared for this book review, but maybe I was, you know what I'm saying? So again, The Rebirth of Pan. My name is Michael Jordan, AKA The Series Alchemist. If you would like a reading from me, hit me up in my email, I'll leave my email down in the description box, and I'll see you in the next video. In the next video. Peace.